Uh, you see, I'd once attended a research conference and I met some NASA personnel who, uh, they recruited me to come to Johnson Space Center in Houston. So it fit. Uh, in 2002, I started a new job as NASA's first manager for audiology and hearing conservation at Johnson Space Center. So after building clinics and building professionals and combat zone and building things that nobody had done before in many places, um, how did you manage this new type of operation for NASA? And as the first there, there wasn't any example of how to do it. So you kind of had to rely on experience, I guess. Well, it's like in my other Army assignments, I had the freedom to establish new programs as long as they seemed relevant to management. Uh, some of those program needs were obvious. I had to establish a JSC's first clinic. It provided on-site services to the astronaut corps as well as to uh, the ground personnel and the on-orbit hearing assessments that were being done on the International Space Station. And for our U.S. crew members and the international partners, uh, cosmonauts and astronauts from other nations. And uh, I was part of NASA's op astronaut occupational health team. It was a multidisciplinary group of space experts as well. They had roles with human health and performance. And, and I really enjoyed my close work with flight surgeons and acoustic engineers. And so our job was to make sure that there was a safe and healthy and habitable space vehicle environment where the crews could live and communicate and work. Well, I bet being the a NASA audiologist, you had some very, very interesting patients. Um, yes, um, the workload also included uh, seeing former astronauts. Uh, they would come back to Houston for just a uh, participation in the NASA lifetime surveillance of astronaut health. So I saw uh, the old crew from early Gemini and Apollo missions. Uh, this program focused principally on common spaceflight association medical dis issues like uh, bone loss and neuroocular syndromes and cardiovascular system changes and space anemia, but we did collect longitudinal audiometric data too. Uh, 